Hi, hello everyone, a blessed evening to all of you who are watching us. Welcome to Faith in Action program. And tonight we are going to share to you. Please don't go anywhere, stay there and be attentive to what you know, the testimonies we are going to play. And I believe that you are going to be inspired. Maybe you are watching me now and you say, you don't know what to do. Your life is destroyed, your family. You will see in these testimonies what God has done and what God can do if you believe, if you have faith. All right, if you want to know the UCKG you know, uh, near to you, you can find he's been shown the address of the UCKG Help Center in Asia and Oceania and also Succeed Life Center. We are going now for these testimonies, wonderful testimonies of faith, of God's power. And right after, I'm going to say, a prayer for you, right? Let's go. It was actually in my secondary school it happened. Um, I was after the boy, you know, because um, he was putting things on Facebook about me, about the thing that happened with the, the death that I saw, you know, and I was, I was after him, but then I went to his house, and then I banged him on the door and stuff. And then obviously we saw him and that, you know, because I was with a couple of my guys. And then, I don't know what came over, it's like I just blacked out, literally, I, I don't know what came over me. I just remember I was shaking, you know, just the thoughts that were going through my head. I was just picturing, you know, the little, the little boy that was just laying there because of, because of these guys. I can't imagine what I put that family through that day, you know. He, he, was, he had nothing to do with it. And as I said, as I went home, you know, literally I was feeling sick. Shaking, I didn't come out. Come, I didn't come out after that for about a week because I didn't want to come out. I was literally just—it's like I was traumatized. I was speaking to my mom about this, you know, about everything I got myself into. And she said that obviously from a young age I was already kicking off and stuff, but by 13 I was already involved in the gangs, the fighting. She said, and so I didn't really have that childhood. That's, and she said, she started noticing chains for me from the age of 13. She started seeing, you know, finding knives in my bag, you know, random money popping up, phones that didn't belong to me, you know, at the age of 13. So that's when I already got myself involved. At the age of 16 I had two court cases with a massive criminal record. It started, you know, as just postcodes, areas. But then after I got, you know, personal, they would come after my family. I got after theirs. So a lot of money things were involved. We would leave each other dead if we could, you know. So it got that person. I had a close family family member at the time. You know, we used to call each other cousins. You know, I was taken. He was around five. I was taken to the shop. You know, a car speed hit him. You know, and I, I watched him die. You know, the ambulance came and he was pronounced dead. The day after, you know, I was getting Facebook posts, comments, laughing at me. You know, saying I left him to die, all these things. From that, I wasn't the same again, you know. They just took someone that was like family to me, so. Even when I did these things, even if I felt guilty, you know, I was put in my mind, but they did this, so I'm gonna do even worse to them. Two years ago, I was. I had to move areas. I lived in Newham. I had to move out to Essex because um, I did a bank scam on someone. And all these people were after me. They knew where I lived. And I was at Tag at that time. So when I was out, my mom, my mom told me three months ago that about six guys, they ran into my house, smashed through my door. They told my little brothers to go upstairs. For me, that was, uh, I was hard to hear, you know. I was just speechless, you know. I was in tears. My mum was crying and was just trying to find the right words to say, but nothing was coming out. 
you know what? I, I hugged her. You know, I said, I'm sorry, but nothing I said could have made up for, for what she went through. Just to hear from another point of view, I went and asked my little brother what happened as well. You know, and then um, as he told me, you know, he was in my arms, he was crying. You know, and uh, he was telling me that, you know, sometimes he still hears, you know, my mum screaming. Feels like he can still hear it. I fully just loved, not I loved my life, but I was used to it. You know, I liked the power I had, the reputation I had. I had the sort of respect. You know, I thought if I left all of that, I have nothing. You know, if I left, if I stopped doing certain things, if I changed, these people that are around me, they wouldn't want to be around me anymore. You know, I wouldn't be where I was. I'd have literally nothing. So it was a sort of sense of fear, you know, and uh, yeah, I just really loved my reputation at the time. Many things I've tried because I was I've, I was in uh, Youth Offenders, the yacht program for around two years. Because when I finished my first nine months, I got arrested eight days later. I had to go straight back. You know, I tried um, counselling, but then ended, I ended up attacking my counsellor. So a lot of things I was trying. Even I had a, someone, a teacher in my school that was really trying to help me change. But I couldn't. You know, everything I was literally trying everything out there to change, but I was always being drawn back to what I used to do. I'm not allowed in my old area no more, so we got moved out to Essex. First, I, w I wasn't seeing a lot of the old people I was seeing. I speak to them, I see them now and then. I wasn't really seeing much, so already I was sort of having that detachment, but then, you know, the girlfriend I was at the time, she brought me to the love school. Um, you know, she brought me to, to the church and stuff like that, you know. And from then, I just came off tag, literally about a week before. So it was really, I needed a fresh start. You know, and then when I started speaking to people that went through the same thing, you know, probably even worse than me, they were telling me, no, you can, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. From then I found out a motivation within me that I never felt before. The thing that really stuck with me is that God is always with you, isn't it? Because like, with me, I didn't trust people. I didn't have people to speak to. But even when I'm alone and I'm with my problems, I found it so nice that I'm not alone because I can just speak to God. I can find strength for someone. And I'm not just speaking to, to anyone that can't really do nothing for me. I'm speaking to God who can empower me, that can strengthen me. From young, my mom was always telling me by 18 I'll be dead or I'll be in prison, you know, stuff like that. But for someone to actually say, you have potential, you know, God really wants to use you. For, for me, that was just like, it just shocked me. I want my family to be even more united. Because we, me and my mom, we don't argue, we don't fight like I used to, you know. We have deep talks. I give her advice. You know, my little brothers, they see me as an older brother now, but I, can, I, can, I take them out all the time. You know, they say they want to be like me. You know, um, I finally have a relationship with my brother, my older brother, where we couldn't speak before because I couldn't get through to. But we speak now, maybe not as deep as I want it to be yet, but we speak. You know, I didn't see my, my dad, my real dad, for 11 years. I finally build a relationship with him now. I want to be an actor, I'm going back to college in September after I've got kicked out, after no college will take me, you know, I'm part-time working, and I want to, um, I'm going into youth work, you know, youth offenders now, giving my story, give, telling them that, you know, you can change, I'm going into an area that I couldn't go before, giving my story, giving other youths hope, saying if I can change, you can do it, youths that used to look up to me, say, oh, this guy's crazy, now I'm telling you, come, you can change as well, so, you know, this is my goal is to, people that was in my situation to get them out of that situation as well. If you're out there, what are you going to gain? Literally, you're going to always watch over your back. If you come and give it all to God and He takes care of you, you know, what have you got to lose? That's literally what it comes down to. You know, if it's a life or death situation, what, you're either going to be in prison, you're going to be dead. But if you come and you give your everything to God, give God a chance to do something in your life, then what have you got to lose, you know? You give him everything, he gives you everything, and trust me, you'll be in a much better situation than you are now. My name is Janelle Basingat. In 2018, I was, it was a blessed year for me because I, I can see myself uh, totally transformed. I'm happy. I'm, I ha I'm at peace and my family uh, relationship is good. 
because before I came to UCKG Health Center, my my life is totally messed. I have a lot of addiction, drinking, alcohol, smoking cigarette, taking drugs, borrowing money, and different kind of relationship. That thing uh, in in my in those kind of uh, addiction, I ha I am very paranoid. I am I I am very arrogant and I'm very rude to all. Uh, to all those people who are uh, talking behind my back, to those people who talk about me or giving me advice. Before I came to UCKG, my family uh, relationship is a little bit messed too. And when I'm in UCKG Help Center, I attended one service which uh, when I hear uh, the man of God preach, it was really like a hit on my heart that I needed most. So I uh, continue attending that service until I uh, get healed from my addiction, free from my addiction. I can see myself in 2018 was a blessed year for me, really, because I am totally free from my addiction. I'm not paranoid. Everything I stop, uh, the relationship with a um, different kind of man, I. Re remove their uh, contacts with me. I uh, stop smoking. I stop drinking. I stop. I stop. Also, I have a self control now, and I'm always happy now. I can see myself. Uh, I'm at peace. Whatever um, that comes to me now, I can uh, always say, God is with me, and. Uh, he will gun I will overcome it because before I always say I'm always worried that I cannot overcome things and I, I do some uh, mistakes now in uh, 2018 I'm totally transformed and I'm happy uh, because I have inner peace and I'm happy that my relationship with my family now is closed uh, we are happy and they believe in me at that point of my life, I think I was literally at the edge. I got to a point where I thought, what is the point of going on? Everything about my life is a mess. Everything is just so painful. So I just didn't see any point in going on. I felt pain, nothing but pain. All I got was um, abused beaten, um, verbally, physically, mentally, in every way really. It went on for 10 years, 10 years of being beaten, 10 years of being abused. Sometimes you just think to yourself, who's going to believe me? Who's going to believe anything I say? Because when they look at the person, the, the, the person that was abusing me, you know, he, he was nice to everybody else. He was nice, but they didn't see him when, you know, when he was drunk. They didn't see him when, when we were behind closed doors. I did leave and he came back and I, I don't know for some reason, because I was so afraid of him, of what he was saying to me, you know, I, I got so scared and I, I, I went back because he was threatening to kill me. He was a family friend. I guess that's one of the reasons why um, it would be hard for anyone to believe anything that he was doing to me. Because he was a family friend, he was a nice person, you know, to talk to. When he was showing me all this affection, when he was showing me all this, you know, showering me with the nice words and the affection, I guess I fell for it. It was later on um, when we actually moved in together and that's when it all started. Um, the first slap was on the street um, but I thought okay maybe I said something wrong. That was the first of many slaps, um, many kicks, many punches, um, everything else that followed after that. One Christmas when he, um, he came home and 
really, really beat me up badly. And I was bleeding. I was bleeding from my eyes. I was bleeding. I, I couldn't even tell where the, where the blood was coming from, but he had battered me. It'd been really snowing badly and I, I decided I had to wait for him because I knew that if I, if I left when he, he was awake, I, he would have, I think that day he would have finished me off. And um, I left in the middle of the night. The thoughts of going back never entered my mind actually because um, at that point it was either he would kill me or I would end up killing him. When I left, I knew that was, that was the end of it. But um, it wasn't for him. He tormented me for the next three years. You know, he was looking to kill me. He was looking to kill me, but um, I never went back. And it was the best decision I ever made. But my problem was um, thinking that there was no way out and thinking that there was no help out there. I had a lot to get over. I mean, I did go through 10 years of torment, 10 years of abuse. You don't just get over it like that. You don't just move on with your life, you know. But leaving, taking that first step was the best thing I did. I needed that inner healing. I needed that process. I needed to get myself together, find myself again. There's a friend of, of ours that, um, that was going to a church and um, I was invited, I was, I was invited to go there. At, at that time I thought, well, do you know what? No one can help me. You get to that point actually when your life has been nothing but problems. You do get to that point. But I just thought to myself, well, hold on a minute. My life is a, is a mess. There, I don't, by myself, I don't believe that I can actually get myself back on my feet again. So what did I have to lose? I, I was actually quite surprised because even the first day I went, I, I, something inside of me was like, gosh, this is different. I felt, I felt like I, like they've known me for years, the way they kind of like came and spoke to me. And I started to open up and I've never opened up. I've never opened up about my feelings about anything, not even to my family. I cried, for, I was actually crying. And I guess, you know, for me, I, I thought, no, this is, this is real. This is really happening. I'm beginning to feel something different inside, something that I've never felt. I started to feel, I don't know, peace, I guess. I was actually invited to, to a woman's group there, you know, um, where people, women who had gone or were still going through similar situation that I went through. And even there, there was so much help there. I really got help from that group, from these people there. And um, so now, yeah, now, I'm back on my feet, um, I, I have my confidence, my self-esteem, I, I, I'm, I'm me now, I'm who I'm supposed to be, that's who I am today. I'm happy and I'm still working towards my goals, towards things that I want to do, but yeah, things are great. Hi, my name is Jonaline Magallones. 2018 is a blessed year for me indeed. Before I came to UCKG, I was addicted with so many addictions. I am addicted with cigarette, alcohol, and I also involved in homosexual relationship. I could finish um, 15 or 30 sticks a day of cigarettes and I can't sleep without 1.5 liters of alcohol every night or wine every night. I couldn't sleep without it. And I'm also, um, I was also a very, very angry person. I used to scream 
I used to shout people, even if they just touched me on in a sleeve or in a corner of my dress or my clothes, I would scream and fight for them. I would even end up fighting on the streets. I was really bad. I, am, I, I mean, I have a very bad temper. And be, because of my behavior, it leads me to become a depressed person. I also suffer from depression that I couldn't sleep at night. But then, God blessed me this year that I overcome my addiction. I'm, not, I'm no longer involved in any homosexual relationship. I don't get angry anymore. And I overcome also depression. And on top of, of this, my family was also been blessed that my father, my mother, and my brother, they also quit smoking, drinking, and gambling. I think that is the best blessing I ever received during my entire fight against addiction for myself and for my family. And now I am a happy person. I am blessed and I can smile to everyone. 2018 was indeed a blessed year for me. My Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, your son, right now, I, my Lord, pray on behalf of my God, this person who is my God participating, who is watching my God, this program, this person, my God, whose life is being a mess, family problems, this person is sick, this person is broken financially, so many problems, so many situations. And my God, she doesn't know what else to do. She feels like there is no way out. But you are the same God who changed the lives of these people. They shared in the testimonies how destroyed their lives were before when they came to the UCKG in learned faith. Oh, my Lord, right now, wherever this person, my God, may be watching us, this person is binding, my God, in this prayer. Visit this person now. Stretch out your mighty hands to, my God, heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed. This person, my God, who is sleepless, she cannot sleep. This person is so depressed, sad, down. Oh, my Lord, come. Come upon this person now. And remove, my God, the oppression. Remove the burden. In the name of Jesus, be set free now. Be healed. And receive God's peace. God's power. He lifts you up now. He strengthens you now. And you have strength to stand up, to get up and take action and do something. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, I bless my God, these people, all of them, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you who believe, say, Amen. Amen. So it's our, our pleasure to be with you in tonight's program, Faith in Action. Believe that God has taught your life. But you have to do what these people did. You have to take action. And if you do so, get ready. There will be a new story. Your life will be changed and transformed. Okay? May God bless you. We we'll see you next time.
Come and take control 